Thanks for entering the crypt with us. We're Bone Patrol. I'm Aaron. Chris. I'm Tyler. And Angela. today we have oh. no. Oh, nope. Yep. We have somebody. Angela. Yes, it's me. <laughs> Tyler was quiet. I thought he was waiting for me. <laughs> um, get give us a little introduction about yourself. Yeah, I'm Chris and Aaron's little sister. I don't know her. Also, I don't think it's been revealed that me and Christopher are even brothers. <laughs> oh no. This is groundbreaking so stuff. He's been for, outed thank you for coming out for us. Yeah. You're welcome. You know it's hard to come out. <laughs> oh. I'm the step cousin, by the way. So I don't. I still don't even know how we know Tyler. It's <laughs> inaccurate. Yeah, I don't either. Well, <laughs> yep. Anyway, Angela's here. <laughs> She's gonna hop on an episode. Well, so we. It's my episode today. So listen here, buds. So we uh we're doing a episode that Angela actually a while back sent me a video about. So I figured it was only appropriate to have her come on and correct my mistakes while I read through this beautiful transcript I've written up. Yeah, it makes sense. And I guess while we're talking about siblings, we can also just reveal that every last mile is our brother. And to not forget the Yeti challenge that is still ongoing and to check out his video, uh, Moonlight Ghost video, and then our podcast from last week about the Yeti to try to win some national park passes. Yeah, and I think it's also probably important to not leave out that Bruce Willis is my dad. But not my dad, and nope. not Angela's dad, but no. Joseph's dad. Yeah. And my dad. That's an interesting <laughs> family relation. And Jake's uncle. Yeah, and all of this all of this actually came to be through a premonition and a dream, you know, a vision I had, which leads us right into the episode, which is actually about mm. some strange dreams. Um Stranger dreams. Stranger, stranger dreams. Uh, so uh, this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set some. <laughs> stop laughing, Tyler. <laughs> I'm gonna set the scene for us. So this was fairly recent. It's extremely close to home to us. Um, it's a bizarre mystery, and it's recently gained a lot of popularity due to a YouTuber by the name of Nick Crowley. Um, you should go check him out. Nick Crowley's YouTube channel does a deep dive on mysterious and spooky topics like us, but he's a little more serious. Um, he doesn't drink as many glow sticks as Tyler likes to when we're doing our episodes, so he, he keeps it pretty simple. Um, and all jokes aside, his YouTube channel really is pretty cool, and it's the reason we found out about this mystery. But what is this mystery? Um, it's got kind of layers to it. For us, uh, the close to home part, it's called the Happy Valley Dream Survey, but we got to go back before we get to the Happy Valley Dream Survey because it's got kind of a build up to it. Um, it starts off with the classic Ever Dream This Man. Have you guys ever heard of that? Yeah, I dream him every night. <laughs> <laughs> she dreams him. What about you, it. Tyler? Uh, yeah, I've seen it too. I mean, I've seen it, but not in my dreams. That's no, not you have. You it just was... don't remember. I think yeah, well, I only have nightmares. So of this so man, technically dreams. Yeah, of the man. <laughs> so but I think this the... is a uh, this is like a guy that uh, apparently the tons of people have seen in their dreams, right? And they can't explain why. Yeah, well, so funny enough, you've mentioned that you're the only one who hasn't seen him in your dreams, right, Angie? You said you've seen him in Am your I dreams. Am I the guy? Is it me? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think you are the the man. Yeah, you are. So, so, well, let me, let me explain. Let me see if this is nostalgic for you, Aaron. Okay. okay so yeah. our bizarre dream journey begins with an internet classic that takes us all the way back to the year 2000. As most of us know, the story of ever dream this man, uh, it's pretty much like Aaron said is people were dreaming a guy. All of them saw him different. Some had nightmares like Tyler. Uh, I don't know what kind of dreams Angel's Some had. Some had, uh, oh, my dreams? Yeah, what kind of dreams were yours? Uh, you know, classic dreams. <laughs> classic <laughs> film noir. Yeah. Of this man. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He's the main character. You're not the main character no, in your own dreams? No. <laughs> All right. So in 2006 in New York, the patient of a well-known psychiatrist draws a face of a man that has been repeatedly appearing in her dreams. And one, uh, sorry, in more than one occasion, that man has given her advice on her private life. The woman swears that she has never met this man in her life. Uh, that portrait lies forgotten on the psychiatrist's desk, and for for it gets left on his desk for a few days. 
And then one day another patient recognizes that face and then says they've also had dreams of this man that surprisingly looks like Aaron. Yay. <laughs> he actually looks nothing like Aaron. You should actually look up a picture of him. He's got a massive mouth. His proportions are I have a small frightening. Mouth. Yeah, he's got frightening I have proportions. Very normal proportions. <laughs> Aaron has frightening proportions, it's actually. Almost if you put Aaron in a trash <laughs> compactor and he looks like this man. <laughs> That's yeah. But pretty much. but only if you put him in a like put me in a trash compactor to the point where it didn't quite crush me, just where it really started squeezing me and my eyes started bulging out of my head and the shape of my cranium was more of that of a rectangle. It and would be it would be as if they made a Lego that looked like Aaron. Carrot Top. <laughs> Carrot Top. So so is this re- reverse hydrocephalus? What no, because his head is big. Oh, so his head's big and his Reverse face would is be small. like like the Bigfoot and Yeti with massive feet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so let me get this straight. So there's there's this terrifying man who looks like a muppet and everybody's dreaming of him. That's actually a beautiful way to think about it. He kind of looks like if Steve Jobs was turned into a muppet, but he was also a mob lord, an Italian mobster. And everybody was dreaming of this guy. Apparently, there was a lot of people having dreams about this guy. Um and he got known as this man. That's all. He doesn't have a name. He's just this man. Um, and uh, so since 2006 until this day, at least 2000 people have claimed they have seen this man, um, which quite frankly, isn't that many people for that long of a period of time. (laughs) Well, and also to be fair, it, it doesn't really clarify if these people claim to have seen the guy before they saw the picture or after. I mean, if you were continually looking at a picture of a creepy looking guy i would say statistically it's not unlikely that you could have a dream about that creepy guy or a creepy guy and then connect it to the creepy guy and say yeah it was the same guy yeah i get i get like minecraft dreams when i play too much minecraft (laughs) but the the odd part i guess of it is is it's like all around the world from los angeles to berlin you know moscow it's not just one place in the world so the story spread far and wide. A lot of people have seen the picture of the man. They know the story of the man. People are having dreams of this man. Um, um, so um, at the moment, there are no like relation or common traits among the people that have dreamed seeing the man. Moreover, uh, moreover uh, no living man has ever recognized or as resembling the man of the portrait. Sorry, I'm kind of skimming through like what I tried to make a summary of what the website says. So this is all basic information from thisman.org, the website. Um, But pretty much there's not a real connection between people who have seen the man other than they've probably seen pictures of said man, right? Um, But they claim that the aim of the website is to help those who have seen this man in their dreams and to foster communication among them to understand who this man is and why he appears is an uh an apparently pat what (laughs) he appears in an apparently pattern less array of situations in the dreams of such diverse human subjects i'm sorry that that sentence doesn't quite make sense to me (laughs) that almost sounds like almost like something you hear from math class and you're like is, is that english like what what are they saying Yeah, I think the gist of it is they're trying to figure out a pattern between people who are seeing the man. I think that's the main point. Um, But real quickly, we actually, on their website, they also provide a few theories of what's causing this man um, to appear in people's dreams. Uh, The first one is the archetype theory. Um, Jung, who is, I guess, the psychiatrist who first got the original drawing. I don't have a last name. They just say Jung. (laughs) um yeah so jung believes that this man is an archetype where he can be manifested in dreams when going through hardship or even something emotional almost something that helps deal with said emotions so he's kind of a a helping hand he kind of guides you through whatever you need you're dealing with so trash compactor Aaron helps you through (laughs) that's why he's the main character he's the main character in your dreams um 
the next theory is the religious theory because of course this man is clearly he's a, he's a religious he's a religious man uh the man is uh one of different is one of the different ways god manifests himself and you should follow his dreamy wisdom <laughs> i'd like to say we did these are kind of our summaries of these but pretty much they believe that this man is it's how God manifests himself into your dream. Why he didn't choose the manifestation of someone like The Rock and not Guido's Steve Jobs, I don't know. I don't know. Um, this one's one of my favorites. It's called the Dream Surfer Theory. Uh, this theory is a hard to prove scientifically, but the idea is there's a man out there who has the capability to project himself into one's dreams. <laughs> Some believe that the man in the dreams is the man in real life. So he actually looks like that. But others believe he uses this dream man as an avatar to disguise his identity. Because he he doesn't want to be sold out like Angela did to us earlier. <laughs> um, it's also popular belief that the man has created a mental conditioning plan by a major corporation brainwashing. So like... It's kind of like in Futurama, if you've seen that, how the companies send you ads in your dream. Um, but, but it kind of sounds like it could. It's believed it might be something like an MK Ultra type thing, kind of mind control brainwashing, maybe. I don't know. Sounds like something Mark Zuckerberg would use. Well, isn't that not too far off of what actually happened? With this? Yeah. With the With this man, like in general? Yeah. Um, well, give us a second. We're getting through this. Okay. <laughs> uh, we're still going through theories here. Relax. All right. Sorry. I, I'll, I'll wait till my favorite theory shows up. It starts with a G and ends in arcading. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so the dream imitation theory, um, a psych, a, a psychosociological theory. And when someone is exposing to is exposed to the theory of the man, they are they are so impressed that they start to see the man in their dreams. So pretty much like we were talking about earlier, he makes an impression. You see, you start you start going down the rabbit hole of this man, and you see a hundred pictures of him a day. You're gonna start dreaming about the man, right? The man from Spy Kids 3D. <laughs> wasn't that was no? What was the what was um? No, it's the dude. The, isn't that the Big Lebowski? I don't know what his name yeah, is. That's the Big Lebowski. That's the guy. You're talking about the oh, guy. Oh, the guy. Sorry. Do you remember yeah. that? Uh-uh. So Elijah Wood. In, Elijah Wood at the end of Spy Kids 3D. They're getting Why through. Spy Kids 3D? Because that's the only one he's in. Oh. So he's, he, they're getting through the video game, and there's this legend of the guy. And they get to the end of the game, and the guy is there, and he's super amazing, and he... Get shocked and killed and instantly. Frodo Baggins. Spoiler alert. I should have said that first. He <laughs> dies. It's Frodo Baggins. <laughs> Anyways, ne- next theory, daytime recognition theory. Um, in this theory, it is believed that we connect the unfamiliar face from the dream with a stranger on the street, thus verifying our dream. So we have a dream of the guy or a guy, and then we see a face on the street, and we're like, that was the guy in our dreams. He's dream surfing me. <laughs> He's sending himself into my dreams, right? That's the only explanation. <laughs> um, sorry, did you want to talk about what your uh, explanation for it was, Aaron, real quick? Yeah, my favorite theory is the guerrilla marketing theory, which is what it was, right? Uh, yeah, it was pretty. Uh, yeah, it was. It was a. It was a ploy. <laughs> it was just that like they were gonna use this as a way to get a lot of people's attention to look at this and then flip it as a marketing scheme. Yeah. I don't know how successful it ended up being, um, being as know about the guy, but we don't know about the marketing. So I'm going to say 100% not successful in selling whatever they wanted to sell. Unless what they're trying to sell is the guy. (laughs) This man. (laughs) man. (laughs) So I, I would say it's successful in the sense that it got a lot of attention, but it didn't perf- like it didn't execute on the other half of actually marketing whatever the crap it was supposed to be marketing. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because a lot of people still believe in the man. It's not like this is over. The man is still running rampant through our dreams. Well, the weird part is 
how many people do you think show up in your dreams that are people that you have either never seen in your life or you would never recognize because they're complete strangers? And then to somehow be able to describe that in perfect detail, like, yes, I saw this person in my dream. It's like the theory, theoretically, we could have all dreamed about this guy and it could have been a legitimate phenomena, but you're not going to remember that you dreamed about that guy because you don't know who that guy is. What I, you do remember is when you dream about Xavier from third grade who you haven't seen in 17 years. Whoa. I, I would sure hope they described him wrong because he's terrifying. <laughs> I really hope that's not what the guy looked like. They just couldn't really remember. No, I think that you yeah, haven't had just a, like... I don't think you've had a dream where he's made an impact on you and you... Where you yeah, haven't he looks just like yet. the guy from Spider-Man 3. The, the guy, his daughter makes Peter Parker cookies. He looks just like her dad. You'd still have to put him through a trash compactor. <laughs> um, <laughs> we've actually put down some of our uh, favorite uh, dream examples. Um, <laughs> they're Wait, pretty... Favorite dream examples? <laughs> like real life examples. Like these are on their website. People have submitted examples of the dreams they've had of this man. We had to... We had to carefully pick one, which ones we chose if we wanted this podcast to stay fan, family friendly because they were weird. So, so they're that bad. Some of them are pretty weird. He is the main character. <laughs> I am ready. Um, did you want did yeah, to? I'll, I'll read this one. Okay. Is this one that I wrote? I think so. Uh, yeah, it that is? one is. Okay. Uh, so this person. Oh, wait, is, no, wait. That one's yours okay. right there. This person said, I dreamt of this man when I was in the 10th grade. He hasn't been in any reoccurring dreams just one very memorable and terrifying dream in my dream i was stuck in a room sitting on a stool a few feet away from me there was a television set i was visited by two men i had never seen before quote this it's not this guy she this man that they were visited by and the the two men attacked me i woke up covered in sweat and tears and i was screaming i somehow fell asleep then I found myself back in the room. I started screaming and crying. Then this man showed up on the screen. I begged him not to harm me. He didn't change his blank expression or speak. He slit my throat when I woke and I woke up. I suppose he let me out of the nightmare, but I couldn't stop thinking about him for weeks. I still have some of the sketches I drew of him. I know it's kind of weird. <laughs> so that's the first dream. Tyler, have you, have you ever had a dream like this? Um, where someone slits my throat? No. <laughs> Okay. What about you, Aaron? Have you ever had a dream to that caliber? Um, nope. Well, I can t I can tell you right now. This next dream you've all had. You 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 might just need a refresher. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read this one. <laughs> I fell in love. All the school bus. <laughs> uh, we'll get there. I fell in love with him from the very first time I saw him in my dream. <laughs> Even though I think about it, I must admit he's really ugly. And yet each time, each and every time he sweeps me off my feet with his romantic gestures and sweet words. He buys me flowers, jewelry. He takes me out to dinner or to the beach and to watch the sunset. I think we've all had a dream where yes it could it could start off on a bus i don't care where it starts off but uh, you... i was gonna say i've had this dream but substitute the man for the magic school bus we might have all had a dream where we fall in love <laughs> with a, a fake creature <laughs> something fake that takes us out for a romantic dinner watch the sunset flowers jewelry the whole nine <laughs> yards <laughs> for aaron it might be the magic school bus Angela, who knows? It's Simba from The Lion King. <laughs> I love Simba. So the the only reason we we talk about this before we get into the main part of the um, story here is one, on any sort of article, YouTube video you watch, a lot of them will preface by talking about the man, this guy, the dude, the big Lebowski himself, uh, trash compactor, uh, landlord from Spider-Man 3. What is that guy's name? Stew Pickles. It's, it's not, but we're going to go with Trash Compactor Stew Pickles. Um, is because everyone else talks about this. Um, but I think it's a, it shows how much people believe that their dreams have meaning, how malleable our dreams are by what we see around us. It, it leads into, it's a strange phenomenon 
that kind of leads right into what happens next. And the next part is called the Willamette Valley Dream Survey. Um, so we're going to go back. So I guess from 2006, we're going forward. We're going back in time from 2021. It's 2015, and we're in Willamette, Oregon. Uh, you know, it's a good time. The Witcher 3 was just released. The most controversial Star Wars series was just being released. And overall, it was a decent year. I like the Star Wars movies, you know? It was good. I don't know. Tyler's the real Star Wars guy here. Tell me what you think. I enjoyed them. I mean, I'm really biased with Star Wars, and I'll love anything that they come up with, to be honest. Fair enough. Angela? Um, Yeah, I've never seen the movies, but if I trust Tyler's opinion. He's His opinion's valuable to me. All right, and now we need a wrench in the system. Aaron? What? <laughs> what? Tell us how much you hate right, the movies. Get... How much I hated the movies? Yeah. Yeah, they... the movies were bad. T- tell them about your thoughts on Chewbacca. Oh, well, it was obvious that he was actually Ben Kenobi's dad. <laughs> See? <laughs> uh, so anyway. I watched some movies. <laughs> <laughs> We're in Oregon, right? We're in Oregon. Aaron, Aaron's foiled the plot to Star Wars from the get-go. That's why they had to change it so drastically. Yeah, you don't need to watch the Obi-Wan series coming out on Disney Plus because that's what it's going <laughs> to reveal. So it's, yeah, you hear, heard it here first. Well, while the rest of the world is bickering over Jurassic World and how it doesn't compete with the originals, Oregon was kind of in its own bizarre bubble. While well, they had some... Well, that's u- not unique. That's just always... <laughs> Oregon? Yeah, I mean, I still feel like they... I feel like... They might be the epicenter to fight the fight of why Jurassic Park is 10 times better than Jurassic World. You know, I feel like for once they weren't telling me what films I should like and why I should like them. (laughs) Yay, Oregon. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, they added some flyers that started appearing around town and a Reddit user by the name of Marcus Yalo, like yellow, but with an A. Posted on oh, you, Marcus Yolo posted on r slash creepy on Reddit um, about a poster in Portland, Oregon. Sorry, a flyer in Portland, Oregon, and it goes as following. It starts off by saying, "Have you been having strange dreams?" The Lumet Valley Dream Survey is investigating a recent spike in bizarre un- and unexplainable dreams. If you have been experiencing any unusual dream activity, you can help by reporting a summary. Please call 971-258-1456 with a description of your dream. Um, and I have, a, I have a transcript here. It says, when you, when you call the number, this is what it says. Thank you for calling the Willamette Valley Dream Survey. Please leave a detailed account of your dream after the tone. Transcripts of your audio from, uh, from the report may be duplicated for uh, other media. And then it goes beep. And then Tyler, tell us about your weird dream. Yeah, so this man, like, he came over to my house, and we kind of, like, hanged out, and, like, we just had a good time together. Watched some Star Wars movies. Did you guys, by any chance, talk about Jurassic World and Jurassic Park? Yeah, a little. (laughs) The only experience I've ever had with Jurassic World is, well, I saw it, but (laughs) other than that, uh, I, do you remember when we found a copy at work? Yeah, so wasn't was it in like a DVD player or a laptop? Someone or something? brought in a DVD player for us to dispose, and we opened it up, and there was a DVD of Jurassic World in there. I still have it somewhere. Mm-hmm. It's a good movie. I like it. I think it's to very. Be fair, I've never actually used that copy. For all I know, it's actually the ring. It's true. So, do you want to try it? And I'll see if you die in seven days. Not really. I mean, I I think that we could probably convince uh, Lil Lucas, if you're listening, I think we can convince Lil Lucas to do it for us. That would be so nice of him. <laughs> yeah. If you're a true fan, you'll watch this movie for me. <laughs> Please, Lil Lucas, we beg. And I, I don't say that because I watched it and I have seven days to get you a copied version of it. <laughs> That's definitely not why I brought this up. Oh, not at all. We wouldn't harm our fans on purpose. You know, no, not especially we, not to save we would, ourselves. We would, But we definitely would harm them on accident, is what Christopher's saying. Well, sure. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> Accidental harmings are A-OK by us. Yes, of course. Of course. 
<laughs> so this right, so this dream thing though tell me about it the dream thing by thing yeah. what do you mean i mean why is it that 2000 people were having dreams about guido bill gates or whatever you call them <laughs> Steve How, what Jobs. is the connection between that and oregon i'm really confused here um, so the, the connection is, is the, the spike of strange dreams. So when the, the, the little Guido Steve Jobs man was occurring in people's dreams, there was a spike of it. A lot of people were reporting it, whether it was because they wanted to be involved, whether they were researching it too far and they started dreaming about their research or whether they really were just having weird dreams, romantic dreams about Guido Steve Jobs, there was a spike of dreams and the big thing about these flyers that came out was it says there's been a big spike of dreams and we're doing research on them. So so we had a phenomenon back in 2006, 2015, another one's happening, but this one doesn't have a face attached to it. So the difference, the big difference here is the first one, let's just ignore the guerrilla marketing part. The first idea was, hey, there's this man who is showing up in dreams. Have you seen him? And people were convinced that yes they had seen this man because it was put in front of their face and so they have convinced themselves they saw this man but with the willamette dream survey it is more if you've had a strange dream please reach out to us and so it's a little less trying to shove an idea in your head and more if you've had a weird thing reach out to us instead Right, you're right. But on their flyer, they do specifically say that they are investigating a recent spike in bizarre and unexplainable dreams. So they 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 have something they're looking for that they have not told us about. So that's the kind of the creepy part is they have somehow been able to track that there is bizarre and unexplainable dream spike and they are wanting people to re- reach out to share their experience. So And did people did people reach out? Uh yeah, actually. So um <laughs> I'll actually tell that story later. But yes, people called the number, people were leaving their accounts of their dreams or just saying whatever, maybe yelling a provocative word or two and then hanging up because they think they're funny high schoolers. But <laughs> upon researching the phone number, you'll find really no helpful information um, other than the phone number is owned by, quotes, dream survey. That's it. No first to last name. Their first name maybe is dream, last name survey. I don't know. Um, and at one point, it w- the phone number was used for a summer school German immersion class. Um, the immersion program school official, Sophie, I don't know how to say this, but I think it's Skiel. School? Sk- Sophie Cool <laughs> mentioned cool. that uh, it, w- it was a, go- a Google phone number account that is no longer in use for the school. So they have no idea who who's using it or why they're using it. So it kind of leaves us with no leads. Nothing. So a bizarre poster shows up with a phone number. People then decide to track that phone number to see if this is a legitimate survey institution. They find out that this phone number was once attached to a German school, but that phone number is no longer in service. Yes, exactly. So amongst, when you're reading those articles, you'll actually find a lot of people, everyone talks about the fact that it was connected to a German immersion class. No one ever talks about the fact that the phone number is owned by a fellow by the name of Dream Survey. That legitimately. Yes. Like we did that, re- that part of the research we actually had to, like it wasn't hard to find, but we just pasted the phone number and went to the website like, whose phone number is this.com? And it just it said is, Dream Survey. You know it is owned by if them. the phone number went out of service before these flyers showed up? I don't. I We didn't actually see anything about whether, um, because the, the flyer is right, it's 2015, the German immersion camp. I don't know when they discontinued using that phone number. But likelihood is, if this phone number is registered to a man named Dream Survey, it seems like they just took, I don't know what you call it, kind of like with a website where you take the domain. They claimed this phone number. Right, yeah. Or it was assigned to them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it, they just quit using the number, and that just so happened to be the one that they got. Because it's, just, yeah, it's a Google yeah. phone account. So it's not like, gotcha. yeah, yeah, it's not like they exchanged, like, they, it's not like it's Verizon or AT&T or something, right? So, right. Does the story, I mean, is that a dead end there? Is that, do people have more information on who this dream survey is? Well, Angela actually knows the guy personally. Yeah. Nice. Is it, 
I dang it, I didn't have anything. I thought I'd have some clever name to say, but nothing came to me. It's our other brother. <laughs> Gerald G. Dream Survey. Surprise, Richard we have another Oakland. one. <laughs> no! No, uh, but... Brandon, Brandon Fugel! Uh, he still hasn't accepted my LinkedIn request. <laughs> Brandon Fugel. Um, I've actually been in contact Not with Brandon. Not the hammer fist, Rudolph Fence! <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> Those are all the names I know. Well... Uh, Hudson! The, the, yeah, we, we have no leads. None. We're going to leave it at that. We got no leads. But yeah. we have something kind of bizarre where uh, it's actually uh, a company by the name of Futel. They are a telephone company, which we actually found ourselves doing a lot of looking at. We didn't do a ton of notable research but they have a really bizarre website and an even more bizarre tumblr page very very weird like they they have they have their transcripts of from their telephones sorry let me back up real quick futel is a telephone company that had pop-up pay phones but you don't have to pay the purpose of the thing is they believe that everybody should be able to communicate for free it's our it's our rights Right. So right. Sh- they're, if you go to their website, like their mission statement says at Futel, we believe in the preservation of public telephone hardware as a means of providing access to the Agora for everybody. And toward that goal, we are privileged to provide free telephone calls, voicemail, and telephone mediated services. All services, including telephony and human interaction, are free from any Futel telephone. That's I. That's their mission statement, which. What the heck is the Agora? We actually had to look that up too, when because I have the mission statement here in our in our, in our notes. Um, if I remember correctly, the Agora was a I don't remember if it was Roman or Greek, but it was a massive open meeting grounds where people could hang out and chat. I thought it was going to be more cryptic than it was. It's just a it's just a chat service. It's an AOL. And um, is that like all it is? Well, you have to consider that there. So I'm trying to pull up the definition here, but like agoraphobia, right? It's the fear of being out and being around people and being social. So agora would be out being social, I would assume, right? Uh, that sounds right to me. Um, I'm looking up the definition of if it doesn't show. Okay, the agora was a central public space in ancient Greek city states. It was the best representation of a city-state's response to accommodate the social and political order of the pol- polis? Po- P-O-L-I-S. I don't know what that polis? means. Polis? What does that mean? I think that just means the public. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. It's just, yeah. That okay. It's just like the, the, the public, the, the people. Yeah, so it's just, it was them pretty much creating a meeting ground where people could go talk about whatever they need to be, whether it be important or not, politics, what you're having for dinner, doesn't matter. What 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 Anthony Hawk is doing on the mega ramp, you know what I'm saying? Back in oh, ancient yeah. Greek times. He's got to jump over the Futel Babylon, the Tower of Babel, Babel t- thing. They're ma- they, okay. That sounded better in my head. That's ca- <laughs> Are you going to talk about the Tower of Babel they wanted to build? Uh, no, actually, we're not. <laughs> so I don't know if... Okay, sorry if this is sidetracking. I was just... Re- I've been reading their website, and uh, if you go to About Futel, they have this section, and it reads, But we hope that we can also build a Tower of Babel, a monument of telephones and switching networks and cascading psychological structures, which will give the community something else as well. Something we may not appreciate until it has forever changed us. Now, I don't think he's being literal here. I really hope that they meant that Futel is going to build a tower of Babel of telephone booths and try to reach heaven so they can speak with God, who we've already determined is the man. Well, it's funny that you say that because... We we actually want to we want to do an episode specifically on Futel at some point. It's not a promise, not a guarantee, but me and Angela think it would be fun to to do more research on them. They're weird. They have some. I can't wait to hear more about Fuddle. Well, so the there there's a lot going on, and the reason why I'm bringing this up is because the dude might be serious. 
about building the the tower of babylon or babel or whatever he might be dead serious and well so let's carry on through this i don't want to get too in depth with them just because Uh, real quick can i can i make one last side note yeah it would be a good idea, I think, to look into Futel because if you go to their website, it states at the very bottom, the site was last updated, what is this, five days, uh, six days ago. So this is still very active. So, well, going along with what we were saying, though, about how they have a Tumblr page where it's like their operator logs, right, where they talk about what they had phone calls about, the most recent one was January 7th. And it's weird because they're not... They're not well written out. They're really kind of, they're weird. Like the one on the seventh says, caller asked, which operator is this? I replied that it didn't matter and disconnected. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and they just get weirder. Caller wanted to know what to do for their friend's birthday. I said, give them a hug. <laughs> they're, they're weird. Are they actually taking all of these phone calls personally? I don't know. Well, so here, let's let's get into it. So Futel actually started popping up a year earlier in 2015, and the Flyers were appearing in 20, 20 sorry, 2014 was Futel, 2015 was the Flyers. Um, and like we already heard the slogan, but pretty much they want to have free communication for all. Um, and this is the part that made us want to do a little more research. This and the Tumblr page because. On the telephone, there are a few weird numbers available for free, for free domestic calling. And when using the Futel phone, when you dial three, you're giving this directory. So first on the directory is the mayor. S- second on the directory is the Druid of Sisyphus Garden. Third on the directory is the Apology Line. And fourth is the Dream Survey. So they, they obviously are, got some weird stuff going on. I don't know how the mayor feels about having a direct <laughs> line from Futel telephones, but he's, I don't know what he's going to do about it. Um, but the, the thing that really caught my attention is on their Tumblr page, I was reading some of the transcripts of specific ones from the Druid of Sisyphus Garden, because like, who the heck is that? When you Google them, there's not really information to find other than ending up at Futel's website or Tumblr page. I don't know who he is. (laughs) Um, But when calling the dream survey from the telephones, you're greeted with the same voicemail as before and prompt as before. Still no leads. The case went cold. Um, And then actually a little while after this, the owner of Futel, I cannot remember his name. I wish I would have made a note for it. Someone was asking him about it and he just thought it was interesting. So he put it in like the... uh, what am I looking for? The directory. Like he, he said it just was kind of bizarre. So we put it in. So I don't think it was there since day one in 2014. I think it was after the flyers, it was added into the directory. I'd be really curious to know. So as of October 17th, 2020, looking at their Twitter, they put a new telephone up. So they're obviously still putting telephones up and they've also posted they put hand sanitizer at all of their telephones to keep users safe. I'm curious if these new ones are still connected to all those lines you just stated, all those services. Well, I actually wanted to propose if we have anyone who's going to be in the area of Oregon or whatever in any time soon, or we have li- any listeners around that area and they have the ability of locating a futile telephone, it would be really cool to go to one and look at the directory or like dial three yeah. to hear the directory. So if, yeah, if, you, if that's somebody's listening to something they're able to do, the newest one, it says it's on North Central Street between Tyler and Allegheny, east side of the street. How did you find that information in case someone wants to go look to see? um, Just on their Twitter. Okay, so if if you want to see if they have one near you, you can you can go on their Twitter. I'm sure they post about it. Well, actually, this is just a this is a tweet with a link to their Tumblr. So it was originally posted on the Tumblr, and they just also tweeted it. Okay, so yeah, I mean. I doubt we'll have someone that goes and looks, but if anyone's passing through the area, someone lives in the area, you know someone who lives in the area, have them check it out. It should be free, right, by their standard. It should be free to at least get their directory. Um, If all else fails, we'll have to take a Bone Patrol road trip. I'm okay with that. That'd be fun. (laughs) 
I think so too. There's a lot of there's a lot of cryptids we could research in Oregon, Washington area. And there's a fella that we need to pick up for the ride. So we 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 will make it happen one day. One day. You're talking about the kid with the heart of gold. Yeah, the golden retriever boy. <laughs> okay. So the the dream survey case still cold. Nothing going on. Um. Now we are in 2020, not currently. We're still in the past. We're in 2021. Don't get me mixed up. It's 2020 storyline-wise. So, Happy Valley Dream Survey. Sounds kind of familiar, right, Happy Valley? You know Happy Valley? Yeah, can, yeah for people Happy who Valley. don't know, where is Happy Valley? Um, That is the United States of America. The entire thing. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, Utah. It's, it's, there's a portion of Utah. I don't know where it exactly begins or ends. Just for the sake of anybody who doesn't know, Salt Lake area. Yeah, the, exactly. So pretty, the greater Salt Lake area is known as the Happy Valley. Um, so it's 2020, the coronavirus is doing its thing. You know, the world shut down alongside bizarre randonautica strange encounters, the government releasing UFO tapes. The dream survey has come back five years later. It's it's made a comeback in a completely different state. Yes, went from Oregon to Utah, so Portland, Oregon to Salt Lake City, Utah, um, and and uh, we started having flyers appearing, extremely sil- similar to the Willamette Dream Survey. You're given a phone number to call with a very familiar voicemail. The main difference is. Uh, you'll receive a text message from this one after you end your phone call. Um, and the text goes as following. Um, thank you for leaving a voicemail and participating in the Happy Valley Dream Survey. This message is important because um, as the as the Dream Survey got its revival on Reddit, a user by the name of Caitlin24688 got a unique response back from this text that nobody else got. Um, so I would actually like to say I've... I've Do you want to go on a date, Caitlin? <laughs> I'm very lonely. Oh, Hello, I'm Gerald, I'm so Sir Gerald, Dream Survey the Fifth. Would you like to go on a date? I, I, I've, my, I've had uh, predecessors before me teach me, like, this man. I know how to take you out to the beach, see the sunset. I descend from the Find great Willamette man. himself. <laughs> By you, Julie. I wield power you cannot understand. <laughs> Date me, Caitlin. Not quite. So I've I've what? actually called this phone number myself. I've called both of them, um, and I've you I get the text. I respond. Nothing in response back. So that's the part that's. What does the text say? Um, it says thank you for leaving a voicemail and participating at in the Happy Valley Dream Survey. That's all it says. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um. So she. This this is where it gets a little fuzzy and weird. And I don't want to call any other YouTubers out. I'm not trying to start no beef, but it this I want to start it. This would be our first beef with a YouTuber. That's, that's true. true. So I mean, if you want to start beef, whatever. We can talk about it in the agora. Um, we prefer pork, though. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to, I'm not gonna say what I was gonna say. Moving on. Um, so I almost had it. <laughs> Caitlin two four six eight. She is one of the few people that actually has gotten a response from the original text. So she gets a message that says the regular, thank you for leaving a voicemail and participating in the Happy Valley Dream Survey. She retry- She tried to respond to the text message and she got a message back stating, sorry, my responses are limited. You must ask the right questions. Um, she began to ask a series of questions. So this is where it gets fuzzy for me because we don't know what she said back to the original text and we don't know what questions she asked. There is nothing anywhere that we can find that says what she said to them. It just oh says a series gosh. of questions. I have pieced this together. Thank you. Thank you. I've solved it. You ready? Yes. I, I've solved it. Wait, or should I save this for the end? Save it for the end. Okay. Not because I don't want you to say it right now. I don't care. But I, uh, this this one is going to end with a section of what do you think happened? Okay. So well, if that's I, what I it is, then wait. Now. Okay. So she began to ask a series of questions. We don't know what the questions she asked were. Um, but she, re- she received a text back saying, that is the right question, followed up by a very cryptic message that goes as following. The number nine and then space g-o-e-h-e space five space j-i-t so nine go he five j (laughs) 
So um, she posted that to Reddit, and the internet has pretty much all agreed upon that it's it actually is a form of Haitian Creole, which me and Angela had a hard time actually deciphering. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we, do you want to tell them? It nev- we never really got a translation of what nine gohi five jit even meant. I don't. We can't figure out really where they translated this. Yeah, we we used the. Of course, when you tried Google Translate, because they happen to have Haitian Creole in there, um, and then we we would copy and paste it, and we would find pages related to Haitian Creole, but it never had these specific words in there anywhere. So, but the internet has come to the conclusion that it's Haitian Creole and it roughly translates into September 5th. Um, and if you actually copy and paste nine go he five jit, it pulls up a Wikipedia for September 5th. Doesn't talk about Isn't Haitian that that Creole. Song? The Isn't 5th of song, September. Don't you remember? The fifth of, of September. Yeah, remember, remember the fifth of September. We all know that song. Um, and on the five days of September, Haitian Creole gave to me one big gumbo, two like, futile telephones. Oh. Hey, what the heck? That was my line. <laughs> Three futile telephones. Four go he five jit. <laughs> five. Jit Rio. I already said that. Five Tyler, no. Romantic dreams. men. <laughs> so <laughs> it takes you to a web. It's got a Wikipedia page. I didn't dive too much, but it's a pretty plain Wikipedia page. Uh, upon first glance, I didn't even notice that it had a reference to the Haitian Creole either. So it's kind of weird that they're linked together by copy and pasting. Um, so, so that. She, there's her and a few other YouTubers out there that have claimed to have the same experience. And why I say I didn't want to start any beef or Aaron wants to say pork. Um, no pork here. No pork. If you, <laughs> Angela just spit everywhere. <laughs> like everywhere. Tyler suffers from Porkinson's disease. Does that make him spit everywhere? <laughs> bork, 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 bork. Because I'm vegan. <laughs> um, so. So what I was saying is a lot of YouTubers have claimed to get to to get that message, that cryptic message. <laughs> right? And I've tried following exactly as these YouTubers well, have done. They don't even tell us what they said to get any responses back. That's the thing. It's like we said something and they said back, "9 go he 5 jit, very scary." <laughs> and like we try to follow along as well as we can. And I've never, ever gotten a response. It's rumored that you have to wait till like 3 a.m. or 3.33 a.m., which starts to bring in the skepticism that a lot of YouTubers are in for the story other than the actual facts of the matter because it's really common to have to wait till 3 a.m. or 3.33 a.m. for cryptic things to happen. Like, that's that's part of the witching hour and whatnot, right? Like, isn't it from midnight till... 3:33 a.m. is when this creepiest stuff happens something like that so it's yeah it's it's i agree though i mean i've watched plenty of videos on this and somehow all of these youtubers are the ones who get the response it's, right it's a little fishy in two ways one it means either they somehow made contact with the person who it actually is and like i need these views and the person's super okay with it or they're just lying well, I've got a I've got a little side tangent. It leads back into this. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the common Reddit story of Booth Booth World Industries. Um, essentially, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's it's a phone number you call. So there's a story. The story summarized is. Yeah, wait, hold on, real quick. We could even do an episode on Booth World Industries. Okay. Uh, uh, well, it's okay. I won't say the story then. But essentially, it's got a similar thing where you call a phone number. Um. And I, essentially what happened is we've called the phone number several times. And one time, one of my friends used one of those fake prank call apps where you can choose what phone number it calls from. And he used their phone number to call me back using the frank, fake prank <laughs> phone call app. And, and it, it was, freaked ter- it was terrifying. It freaked me out pretty good. But it shows that it's not hard to try to fake that you got a response. And it's also not hard to believe why people get so invested and why it's so easy to flip 
like your view from being like, oh, you know, to like really quickly being like, oh man, this could be real. It only takes a subtle thing to flip your view completely, I feel like. Um, but so a few YouTubers get this response. They all have their YouTube videos where they say it's Haitian Creole. Uh, I don't know how they came to that conclusion either, other than the internet told us so. Um, which ended up leading us to a unique subreddit called r slash five september 2020 um and on this subreddit uh it puts off weird weird cult like vibes people in there are pretty bizarre um they all are in agreement that on september 5th of 2020 there was there i say there was supposed to be because it's obviously past september 5th 2020 by a long shot but there was supposed to be an apocalyptic scenario that can only be stopped by the power of dreams um, and the original Reddit poster gives us this warning that we have this long, we need to use the power of our dreams to stop this apocalyptic scenario from happening. Um, Sounds like a Disney movie. <laughs> Is I'm, this not just the plot to the newest Disney movie? Yeah, uh, Gerald... Gerald R. Dream Survey and the Strange Wait, Apocalyptic Dream. is that not the plot dream. to Soul? Don't they? Isn't that how they, like, they solve these issues by the power of their dreams in the sense of their aspirations? <laughs> we figured it out. Uh, I mean, well, <laughs> I don't think it's quite a... <laughs> I didn't want to say this because now the the government will be listening, but... um. Wampler Disley actually had a script that inspired Soul, which was about this man in an apocalyptic scenario in September 5th, 2020, where we have to use the power of our dreams and aspirations to save the world. Um, and that's where that they, they thought that maybe that was too dark of a uh, plot for children. So that's why they kind of steered towards the direction of Soul and being it's from Pixar is because Disney kind of, failed to keep their film industry up and Pixar saved them. So they're like, uh, we're taking that along the way. Um, so now the, the mouse, the mouseketeers are going to come to my house and probably break my kneecaps for revealing that information. But you know what? It was worth it for the podcast. Yeah. Spoiler alert. The government was listening the whole time. <laughs> Hello, you? agent Clover. I know you're there and you're never going to catch me. Yeah, I mean, my government agent will sometimes send me text messages and tell me right when the guy's about to come around the corner and counter strike so I can pull the trigger perfect timing, one shot, one kill. He's really nice. Boom headshot. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, so the the uh the day of reckoning goes as following. Um the day will be exactly twenty four hours. Usually it's a tiny bit less than 24 hours exact. Um, electric devices won't work. People will disappear. And uh, he, the guy who's making this post claims to have, have seen dreams of a man in blue flames who told him about this thing. He talks in codes and tells us tales about a mysterious organization. Now, I know this is a stretch, but this is what I was kind of dancing around before. Some people want to connect this blue flaming dude to this man from the original story that we started with. I don't know if it's true, though, but. But, you know, back to back to the dreams. And then he says back to dreams those interesting strange dreams and back to those weird dream surveys from 2015. Um, sorry, this is, I ha I have not distinguished. So he, we're going back to the strange dreams back from 2015. Um, and now the happy Valley dream survey of 2020. Um, so join me dive head first into the rabbit hole of high strange of whole. Oh my gosh. I cannot read. So join me dive head first into the rabbit hole of high strangeness and wake up when September ends. Wake me up. Oh my gosh. Wake me up when September ends. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Why was that so hard? <laughs> Bonk. The hole was too shallow. You hit your head too hard, Christopher. Don't dive head first next time. Blap. <laughs> I do have a dent in my head. Our parents never Blap. gave me one of those uh, baby helmets. Well, not everyone needs one. I need one. No. <laughs> you need one now. I need one now. <laughs> Yeah, do you ever, Angel, for fun, do you ever poke the squishy part on Christopher's head? I didn't know he had a squishy part. You can see, no! <laughs> you can see the my heartbeat through it. I'm scared. Oh my, it's really squishy. Just don't squeeze him too tight. That's squishy. Listen, 
the pure dab, but it's squishy. <laughs> so, I, I I have something to ask you then. Uh, September fifth, twenty twenty is passed, right? I'm yeah, I'm, not, I'm not the only one that's passed, calendar. right? You guys are passed with me. We're not. I, you guys my are... calendar says it's passed. <laughs> okay, good. What about yours, Angela? What yep. does your phone say? Uh, it says September twenty twenty passed. So um. So that kind of. I, I, I don't want to say it brushes under the rug like, oh, we can't really say that they were right. Like, what if they were right and we were, we reap the benefits of them harvesting the power of dreams to stopping this apocalyptic scenario and we have moved on forward? Or it could possibly be we are still in said dream scenario. It could also be said that they're just full of crap. No, not not an option, actually. Mm-mm. It's no. been scientifically proven this man himself has written an article. Oh, if it's in an article, then... Yeah. All right, I stand corrected. That you do. But... I'm going to write an article, though, and then you're going to have to take us all back. I don't have to take anything back. It's, the, it's this man. He's the one that wrote the article. The man from the dreams, the flaming blue man. He's going to be real embarrassed in front of all of his friends when my article comes out. <laughs> so the date's passed. Nothing's happened, obviously. We're all chilling. Um, but oddly enough, in Kingston, Ontario, Canada, that is. I don't know if there's Jamaica. another Kingston, Ontario, but <laughs> it's apparently there's one in Jamaica. Um, just like the Happy Valley Dream Survey and the Willamette Survey, Kingston, Ontario has its own version of the flyers starting to appear. Besides a different phone number like each flyer has, um, this one has the world-famous Cicada 3301 symbol in the bottom right-hand corner. Still no leads to the mystery. It doesn't really lead us anywhere. Still no leads on if we're still in the dream of September 5th, 2020, or if uh, we beat it, or what's going on. This one, um, I think, is just trying a little too hard to be cryptic and adding the Cicada 3301 symbol in the corner. Um, seems a little too obvious, but hey, you know what? If it's Cicada three three zero one, the Mouseketeers are already here to are already on their way to break my kneecaps. You guys don't need to come here to do any more damage. If 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 it legitimately this had any connection to Cicada, this would be mind blowing. Like this would be huge news. But I'm gonna have to agree that it's it was it's kind of cheesy it, to put that on there. It seems too to, obvious when you're already trying to be secrety secretive. To put that on there is really kind of cheesy. And for those it's of you, almost <laughs> like, oh, carry on. Putting on the flyer that this is a really secret project. <laughs> it's like, right, right. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's interesting. I think for those of you who don't know Cicada, we'll probably end up doing an episode on it. It's pretty well known. It's not a big secret at this. Well, there's a big secret around it. The story of Cicada is not uh, that big of a secret. Wee woo, wee woo. Spoil alert. Angela Bonk him on the head again. Spoiler alert. That, that might be our season finale. It might be a big old Cicada cover. Oh, yeah, I didn't say that. You sp- you get bonked. You just bonk. <laughs> bonk him again, Angela. No. No, no you to, get bonked. Send him to spoiler I'm jail. bonk you until you look like this man. <laughs> you look like that dog who gets bonked on the head and it squishes his head. And you don't want him th- he looks like a, a, squished, a squished head dog. You know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so anyways no spoilers but essentially the cicada 3301 was a big internet mystery in the past that has a lot of weird stuff surrounding it so that's why it seems too obvious that they're just trying to be cryptic by attaching their logo to the bottom corner right that's just asking for like look at us we're mysterious like tyler was saying it is yeah i agree so, so uh i don't really give that one i don't yeah, I don't really give that one much. Uh, what what what's the word I'm looking for? Credit. <laughs> Credit. There's not much tread here. It's it, there's nothing really to look at. I think they're just riding the wave of cryptic weird weird flyers popping up around town, right? Um, but in in conclusion, essentially, we have no idea where the flyers are coming from, and we can say the same for the phone numbers. Each phone number we tried looking up. And each one was owned by some different version of pretty much Dream Survey or Happy Valley Dream Survey, right? Right. Um, and the telephone company Futel seems to have some interest, some interesting things going on all around it, but really no leads on that either. But we do want to do more research on that. Um, 
the uh, the prophesied day of reckoning. <laughs> it's funny in the Google Docs I wrote the day of reasoning, not reckoning. Prophesied by the Reddit cult has passed, leaving us with questions of what it what it means. Um, so this is where I'd like to get. So, oh wait, oh yeah, yeah, this is where I'd like to get some theories. Um, I'd actually like to let Angela go first because it's most directed with with it before we go too off the rails and saying these guys are all idiots and not real. So. So with my theory, I dove a little deeper into it, and after diving into it, um, there's actually, if you do some research, a private Instagram with a girl's picture that has that number attached to it. I can't remember which survey it was, but it has one of the surveys number attached to it, which doesn't necessarily mean anything, but um, Googling the girl's first name and the word dream, and someone with that first name wrote a weird book about dreams. Another woman with that first name does weird public art projects. There's a public phone installation art project called Futel with a directory of weird numbers, including the dream survey. I don't know if she, wait, I don't know if she does Futel Futel installations, but it's a loose and wild theory. Did that make any sense? Yeah. So essentially there's someone who's writing uh, books about dreams whose name is connected to it. How is the name connected to it? Because if you look her up on Instagram, it's her name, and she has one of the dream survey numbers in her. Right. So her, the one in of the bio. in her bio, one of the flyers numbers is in her Instagram bio, and she well, and that, writes that, a book about that dreams. That seems that seems to make a little bit of sense because the biggest argument against Futel, I guess you could say, I've heard is that it's just an art project because they've been known to do. And you, you, you it's like you said, you want to do a deep dive on Futel later, so I won't get too much into it. But that seems the biggest argument against them is they're just a, a modern art. Yeah, so my theory is, conglomerate. is it's just an art project. But you guys, I want to hear your theories. Are we So let me get this straight, Christopher. Is this the legitimate theory or is this the putting aside reality theory and assuming it's legitimate? Um, let's start with, okay, yeah, Angela started with the, the one that is, you know, a kind of a reasonable explanation. So let's start there. All right. My reasonable explanation for the Happy Valley Dream Survey is it's a kid on Reddit who saw the post about the Willamette Dream Survey and had a great idea because he was bored during lockdown. And he also knew about Cicada and these other cryptic things such as maybe booth world industries and other things similar to that and so he made these posters put them around salt lake and then he had either his legitimate phone number most likely an alternate phone number where these texts would come through and he would personally respond if he wanted to and he just decided to respond to just one and it worked out or my guess is he knew the person and he had them text him at a specific time where he could respond to the text with a very cryptic message, which then she could take to Reddit and have the story blow up more. And then even better, disappear off the grid entirely after that, because everyone loves a good mystery that kind of dies with no resolution. Very beautiful. I think that's reasonable. Tyler? Yeah, I would agree with Aaron. Um, I think it's just a kid off Reddit trying to make like maybe like a uh, Air G um where they're just trying to make something really creepy and they're just doing random things to make it more cryptic more harder to pinpoint who it is and then yeah he just disappears and other people so like the ontario one the kingston one is probably another redditor doing the exact same thing right yeah no i i would agree i think we're all kind of in the same idea that um there's not actually an apocalyptic scenario going on around it i don't know so i think each one obviously like you've mentioned is a different redditor or user using this i do like the idea the fact that the girl who wrote the book that angela mentioned has the dream survey number in her bio um i actually read a theory where people believe that she is listening to these dreams and um she uses them as inspirations for her books, or it sounds like she has a book just about people's dreams. Um, strangely enough, one of my my old manager, uh, Vinny, if you listen to this episode, I'm talking about you. He uh, he uh, he found a a QR code on the local front runner station. So so it's not the I guess it was on the train. So this train from 
all the way up to Salt Lake down to Orem Provo area. Um, he found a QR code that says Strange Dreams. When you scan it, it takes you to the website where you can call a phone number and stuff. I, I, which makes me think, yeah, it's just a clever redditor from the Salt Lake area, you know, having some fun with it. But he actually uses it as if he's having like a stressful day. He'll use it to like get things off his chest. I know then I know that Viddy does this. Yeah. And I know that sounds weird, but he'll just be like, if I had a weird dream, then I'll like call and tell it. So I'll stop thinking about it for the day. It's actually a pretty clever idea. So if the lady's out there writing books, she's going to have some good info from Vinny because Vinny's got some crazy <laughs> stories, dude. The only thing with it is it'd be hard to know if the QR code was even made by the same person because I could very easily make a QR code that links to any website and then make a sticker of that and start posting it around. Right. Yeah. Um, once again, though, I think it, regardless, re- we're the same person or not doesn't change the outcome, right? It's just somebody just is making these things and putting them up because of the other one. But the sure, it could odd, be somebody too who who liked the idea and didn't want it to die, or it could be the same person. Right, and I think that the the Eve, regardless of whether or not there is something weird going on, which we're gonna get into our weird theories, it is still pretty creepy that people are putting these up, getting them out, putting up flyers in these pretty busy cities without being caught. So that's something that we can we can acknowledge is pretty sneaky of them. But I'd like to get into a. Uh, the weird theories if if the the dream survey is cryptic and weird and there's not a regular everyday explanation for it what is it angela uh i don't have any <laughs> you don't have you don't well, like come on suspend reality for a second okay let me what think is about it? This. what is actually okay. going on here? tyler go first okay so let's let's take it down to the rabbit hole so i believe the man in the picture is steve buscemi Now, for those of you who don't know who Steve Buscemi is... Quit listening to our podcast. If you don't know who Steve Buscemi is, go go watch a movie (laughs) or two. So I've had several dreams about Steve Buscemi. And this guy, I feel like he is the man who is going to save the the apocalypse. It's not going to happen September 5th, 2020, because it didn't happen. But he... What he does is he surfs dreams and he collects knowledge, um, knowledge to help us, you know, survive the apocalypse. That's my that's my thought. I think that's beautiful. I mean, I don't think Steve. Okay, I do think Steve Buscemi's beautiful, um, but specifically his eyes. Um, what about you, <laughs> Eric? What do you think? It's easy peasy. So we look at the message from the Happy Valley Dream Server where they say, "Hey, my responses are limited." Now, what famous piece of communicative technology had limited capability to send a message? You had to learn how to abbreviate or write in such a way that I'm not sure what Tyler just mouthed to me. A pager. I. What was okay? I didn't think about that. I was going a little more old school, like 1837. The telegraph. Pigeons. All right. Who do we know? Who is our favorite person from the late 1880s who would have had a telegraph abraham lincoln <laughs> rudolph fence rudolph fence the late uncle of abraham lincoln listen i think that this dream survey is linked to rudolph fence who was using a telegraph in 1880 1890s whenever that was and the only reason it comes out is you know in a different language when he responds because it's it's traveling through time. It's going to get mixed up and weird. And what he was trying to say is September 5th, 2020, I'm coming to your time. I'm going to show up in Times Square mid-June 2021. So I think Rudolph Fence is coming this year. I don't know why he said September 5th. I think that was just the date that he sent the message and it just took that long to get here. Or it means I'm coming on September 5th, 2020, and he got hit by a taxi in Times Square and died. So we actually didn't ever hear about it. You so I'm, I'm banking on he's coming mid-June this year. Okay. We'll keep, our, keep your eyes peeled, those folks down to Times Square, if you see a little Rudolph Fence man walking around. I say little, but he's probably massive. He will pile drive you if you get too close. He's scary. So my, my theory is uh, I think... 
I'm going with the the cult apocalyptic scenario where we have to fight off this this with our dreams. I think it's either one of two things, right? They were able to harvest enough energy from their from their dreams and they were able to uh to essentially stop the apocalypse or we are currently in a dream state while the apocalypse is happening around us and they are trying to fight off the apocalypse while we are none the wiser and we're just sleeping away that's my theory well for right oh, for my theory let me get what 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 what's this man's name that you were talking about earlier wallaby disley wampler disley <laughs> wallaby disley <laughs> i think i don't Know much about Wampler, but Wampler Disley, but I think he set this up to get inspiration for a theme park. Oh, like what kind of theme park? A dreamy theme park. Is it where maybe dreams do come true? Instead of, yes, but instead of, you know, classic Mickey Mouse running at you to take pictures, it's this man <laughs> and they're everywhere. <laughs> The if you walk into the central hub of the amusement park, there's a big statue of Wampler holding hands with this man. <laughs> okay, there's we... also a telephone booth ride that like all rides are like telephone booth themed. <laughs> we okay. I actually think we have something to propose on Reddit, Instagram, wherever you see our stuff. I think we need to put out a Photoshop challenge. <laughs> Of Wampler, of Wampler Disley holding hands with this man. Yeah, I, I'm putting. The, we got to put the challenge out there. Um, well, so re- regardless of if you believe it's fake, if you believe it's not, I think there's a lot that can be spoken to on the fact that people are extremely influenced with little, very little information to influence them. The amount of power these stories had over reddit and people and their strange dreams that they thought were being manifested from this bizarre scenario is pretty insane so i think there's a lot to speak to on the fact that our brains can be easily tricked into believing that something when you look at from by standing back is clearly fake it's just weird to see that you can get sucked in so deep you know what i'm saying so i think it would be cool if we if, if if we got anyone out there who listens, I'd like to be a guest on our show that could give us give us a little insight on the psychology on something like that because it is kind of crazy. I concur. <laughs> he concurs. Well, I think that wraps up this episode. Um, I think. I mean, do we have anything we need to tell the people to look out for? Any episodes? Anything look good? Look out for Wallaby. Um, there's, I have an important message for the people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hello, fellow diamond hands. We hold. We love this stock. We're taking this baby to the moon. I'm not condoning this message, but I'd like to see where it goes. <laughs> to the moon. We don't, I, you know, no, strike that. We don't stop until we hit the Kuiper belt. Down with paper hands. We don't sell until he sells. I'm not going to add anything to that. I don't want to spoil it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, in conclusion, I think we can end this one with a, uh, (laughs) a good night romantic dreamy kiss from this man. Tyler? (laughs) I'm going to pretend to be Steve Buscemi. <laughs> All right, and we can lock this one in the crypt. In our, in our dream crypt. They're a little different than your regular crypt. Go ahead and store them in your dream crypt. Have you ever seen Dr. Sleep where they have the dream box? Put it in the dream box. So, All right. And good night. Good night. Good night.